Here are the 12 reasons why expats leave Cuenca, although this list could apply to pretty much anywhere an expat moves. And the first one is culture shock. Yes, there is an adjustment period. I think this would apply to any other city, mm -hmm. period. Any other, any place with a different yes. culture than what you're used to. Exactly. And things are a lot more tranquilo here, and especially from the U.S., we're used to things moving at kind of a quick pace here. Mm -hmm. They just don't move that quickly. No, it's nice, but it is an adjustment. Mm -hmm. People are not as punctual here, which is also adjust an adjustment. Mm -hmm. And they don't communicate as well. So mm -hmm. a lot of times we get invited to events and we have no idea where, they, where the event is or when it is. There's no date, no time, no location. <laughs> yeah. That's common. There's no signs at the, at the venue, so you don't know where to go. Yeah, it's interesting. A lot of stuff is word of mouth here or mm -hmm. they just use Facebook. And then a lot of times the Facebook information is not updated. Yeah. So that could be kind of tricky. Mm -hmm. And we found that it, it's a bit tricky to get information clearly the first time you go around for anything. Yeah, if you want to get your, your utility set up or mm -hmm. your internet, we found that it takes like two to three visits or interactions to get things done. Yes, now granted we did not use a solicitor or a service. I know there's some providers out here that will go with you and help facilitate this process. We did that on our own. Um, which in retrospect may have been easier for us had we not done that, but it yeah. was a really good learning experience and mm -hmm. it definitely helped us recognize the cultural differences and the importance of uh, relaxing and yeah. taking things a little bit slower. Yeah, and another thing is that tomorrow is a term that's used here to mean sometime in the future that may never come. So a lot of times, oh, I'll get, that, I'll get to that tomorrow. It could mean next week, next year, or never. <laughs> <laughs> We're just not used to that in the States. If yes. somebody says, I'll do that tomorrow, they mean they're going to do that tomorrow. Yes, and if they haven't had it done by tomorrow at like 7 a.m., it's late. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the culture shock can be quite quite difficult when you're in a different country. Agreed. Yeah. All right, the next one on our list is the language barrier. Yeah, that one's a tricky one and one we're still struggling with. Although I'm happy to say you guys may not realize this from our <laughs> bad Spanish in our videos, but we've actually improved a lot. But the better you get, the more you realize you have so much more to learn. Mm -hmm. And our comprehension has, wow, it's gotten so good. But it was yeah. tough and, and it was a little scary for us when we first got here because our Spanish was not very strong and you know, Cuencanos have their own language. Their own version of Spanish. Mm -hmm. And if you leave Cuenca, we're kind of spoiled here because so many people speak English. But outside Cuenca and other parts of Ecuador, English is not very common. So when we've left Cuenca, it's very challenging to communicate in English. So we really have to use our Spanish. Yes, and it's challenging too because then you have different dialects depending on what part of Ecuador you're in, whether you're in Cuenca or the coast or mm -hmm. um, Guayaquil is different than Quito. Yeah. So. On the coast, they drop the S like, uh, or the consonants on into words like the French do. It's a really difficult to understand when there's no consonants on the end of words that we're used to. We're having a hard enough time learning the language and then the words are different. Right. Yeah, that was pretty frustrating. Yeah. And when we first moved here, we didn't realize that Ito, it's common oh, to yeah. add Ito to a lot of words, which if you don't know that's coming, you're completely confused. Yeah, they Ito everything. Abuelito, Perito, yes. ch ch Chirazno, what's Durazno, Duraznito. Yeah. To this, we went to the Mercado the other day, and she, they had little peaches, little peaches, and a peach is called a Durazno, and she called it Ooh Duraznitos. <laughs> <laughs> like everything gets an ito. Everything here. gets an ito. Yeah, it's, that can be a challenge when you're learning a new language. Yeah. When, when words are used differently here in a different dialect than what we've learned. Yes, and when you're trying to get settled in mm -hmm. and ex experiencing culture shock, for sure. Yep. The third reason why expats leave Cuenca is because they're bored. Hard to believe. Mm -hmm. We're not bored, but then again, we do work a lot. Yeah, we work a lot. We're not retired, though. I think there, if, if you want to be active, you can be as active as you want to be. I, I always say that Cuenca is like a cruise ship. There's tons of activities, and mm -hmm. the food is amazing. <laughs> And there are you can, there are all all kinds of things going on. You can do everything from knitting club to meditation, book clubs, language clubs. There's and, art classes here. Yeah. There's a lot of different charities which we really need to mm -hmm. cover. Yeah. There, you can volunteer. There's soup kitchens and dog teaching, rescues. Yep, teaching uh, people English. Mm -hmm. All sorts of good stuff. Yeah, you can keep yourself busy, but you kind of have to be a social person. A lot of those events are social events. Most of them are right. But if you're not, I'm not that social. <laughs> I just enjoy taking my camera out and taking pictures of stuff and walking. That's what I do for fun. 
I don't myself. know. I think our meetups are pretty fun. The, the meetups are fun. <laughs> we have a lot of fun. We do. All right. The next reason is that people want a job or a purpose. They just, they miss having that something to do. Yeah, I can understand that. Mm -hmm. I'm, my parents struggled with that when they retired. And I know that's pretty common that people don't really know what to do with themselves yeah. if you don't have a hobby or something to take um, take up that space, right? That's mm -hmm. big space in your life. I know I'd be bored if we didn't have this to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if I didn't have a job or if we weren't doing videos, I'd be bored. Yeah, it would be tough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I enjoy doing this. Uh, the next reason is people are homesick. They miss their family, their grandkids, um, or their friends that are, that are from back home. Anything to say on that? <laughs> Be nice, Amelia. <laughs> we haven't really felt homesick. <laughs> we haven't felt homesick. Now, I'm not going to say I don't miss people. That, Of mm -hmm. course, we miss our families mm -hmm. and um, our neighborhood. Well, I don't miss Denver that much anymore. I don't miss but it's I'm so different when we left yes. from when we moved there. But uh, totally understand the feeling of homesickness. And, you know, sometimes it's knowing, it's getting out of your comfort zone. And that's what people miss is being in their comfort zone. Mm -hmm. We didn't really experience that, but it's certainly not uncommon for people to mm -hmm. do that. And that's a tough one to push through. I think that's why it's so important that you do get out and become active and meet other people that are like-minded that can help you transition. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and form a social community. I think that does help with the homesickness. Agreed. Mm -hmm. And of course you can always Skype. Yes. <laughs> Skype or <laughs> FaceTime. Yes. All right, the next one is people miss the conveniences, especially if you come from a Western country like the US or Canada. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I had a hard time letting go of Amazon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Amazon can't deliver here the next day. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe even next week or next month. And it is so convenient when it's like, oh, well, we're out of chili powder. I'm just gonna go get some, or we need nutritional yeast, or yeah. uh, you know, you can't just bop over to Target and get our Zyrtec or mm -hmm. our Allegra for JP. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's no Beyond Burgers or Impossible Burgers. No. <laughs> there's no spe very few specialty items. We get really spoiled in the states. Like there's no specialty vegan cheeses here. Although that's not true anymore. Oh, they do have. They did we're have one at Supermaxi yeah, that we saw. We're starting to get more of that. And Zatua Miski sells it too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But anyway, yeah. you get you adapt, and since we're supposed to be minimalist, it's really not a bad thing that I can online shop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a lot of people do miss that though, especially the convenience of going to Walmart and getting everything you want in one place. A lot of times you have to go right. to different places here to get different things. We enjoy that because it gets us out seeing the city, walking around, you get to know people and know the people, you know, the vendors, mm -hmm. but it definitely takes time. It's a process. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you can't load all the stuff in, up into your car. A lot yeah. of people don't have cars here. Yeah, we don't have a car, so we're not going to go to Walmart and fill up our trunk with junk and take it home. I do miss <laughs> the convenience of a nice, smooth sidewalk. Yeah, I do miss that one, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the sidewalks here are, are a bit treacherous, as we've mentioned in several videos. Yes. <laughs> All right, the next one is family issues or illness. A lot of people are retired and they have elderly parents that are in their 80s or 90s back home and they have health issues and sometimes people need to go back and take care of them. Yeah, that's really sad, but that's mm -hmm. the reality of life. And another reason that people go back is for their own health issues. And if mm -hmm. your home country has health care that will cover that, especially if it's like long-term stuff, mm -hmm. uh, there's a big reason why people leave. Yeah, a lot of Canadians go back because they have universal health care and so everything's covered there or it may not be covered here, especially if it's a pre-existing condition. Right, same with Medicare for the U.S. I don't know exactly since obviously we haven't experienced that ourselves, mm -hmm. but I do know that, that um, people will go back because they have different yep. coverage. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right, and that was that healthcare was the next one. So we'll skip ahead. Oh. That was uh, number seven. Number eight is no. Number nine. We're on number nine. We <laughs> <laughs> that was eight. This is nine. Visa problems. Okay. So we had a, a friend of ours who worked had a business here that went out of business, and they were sponsoring her work visa, and then she, she didn't get another visa, so she had to leave. Yeah, I, this one. It definitely can be frustrating. There's lots of different visas available, and this is another one where you just really got to persevere. And if it's important to you and you want to stick it out, you can. There's definitely ways to mm -hmm. stay in the country. Mm -hmm. But again, it takes patience, and 
you just have to know that things are going to take longer than you think they will. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at some time, some cases it may end up costing you more money than you thought. So for a work visa, I don't think that, I don't even know if that costs any money. You can get a volunteer visa. But then again, if those fall through and then you need to change over to an investor visa, then you need what, like $40,000? Yeah, $40,000. So that's a big increase. Yeah, especially if you don't qualify for a, like a professional visa. Right. If your university isn't on the approved list and you can't get that, then you would have to do an investor visa unless you're old enough to have a pension. Right. Because if you're here on a work visa and you're not retired and you don't have a pension and you don't have option to get a professional visa, then you might have to leave. Yeah, you might have to leave or do a volunteer visa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which that's has its own requirements and issues, though. It does, and those visas are all two-year. So temporary. They temporary, never can be right. permanent. Mm -hmm. Which is another, could be another issue. Yeah, yeah. And another reason why people leave. Yes. And here's another reason why expats leave, specifically Cuenca and other high altitude places, is the altitude sickness. Yeah. Some people never adapt to it. And the sucky thing about altitude sickness is that you don't know you have it until you're in the altitude. Yeah. And then there's no quick escape. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you're no. stuck. You got It could take hours to get to a lower altitude. Yeah. So th this was common for people coming to Colorado. So we're yeah. used to having this conversation a lot. Mm -hmm. But, um, However, we did find out that that co uh, mate de coca does really help with it. It does help. Yeah, whenever I've had that feeling of lightheadedness, I drink a cup of that, and it works great. And I've heard that there's a prescription you can get in the U.S. if you're worried about this, so you can bring that with you mm -hmm. uh, in preparation. Other than that, though, honestly, there isn't much you can do. No, go get an oxygen tank. <laughs> yep, and um, just... Try suck it up. I yeah. guess. <laughs> That's not easy. That's coming from someone who's easy never for felt me, it. Right? I have had altitude sickness before, which is really weird because I lived in Cuenca, or Cuenca in Colorado for a long time. But it's not pleasant. I get no, it. It sucks. But so some people leave for that reason. Now we're on number eleven, which is the weather in Cuenca. It's cloudy for four months out of the year, and a lot of people can't handle that. I know I don't like it. Yeah, we're thinking next July we're going to take off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it rains kind of not every day and not all the time, but it rains for about two months uh, in May and June. And then it is cloudy from May through August. And God, I'm just, I'm, I'm so over the clouds. Yeah, sometimes it just sets in and you can't even tell what time of day it is because it just never really gets that light. Yeah. It's disappointing. And it's weird to me, especially in July, June and July, it would feel warmer at nighttime than it would in the daytime. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That's probably a mental thing with my part. Like I expect it to be colder at night so I can handle it better, but mm -hmm. it, it's, it gets a little tough. Yep. All right. Our last reason our, on our 12 reasons why expats leave Cuenca is to see other parts of Ecuador or even other parts of the world. And this is an awesome reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We don't want to leave Cuenca, but we want to experience other parts of the world, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, India really kicked it off for us and we're chomping at the bit to, <laughs> to go. do another yes. exotic vacation. Yes, yeah. but there's so many awesome places to go and experience in Ecuador. And to be able to go and stay for longer than you know a week's vacation would be amazing. So you really get to learn... The different cultures yeah. and a lot of people yeah they moved to different south american countries uh, colombia was popular i don't know if it's popular anymore mm -hmm. but panama is a really popular destination costa rica mm -hmm. and then portugal yeah portugal is becoming a lot more popular mm -hmm. and a lot of people we've known several people that moved to the coast or vilcabamba or the amazon i mean it just really depends on what you like cuenca is a really good landing spot it is to get your visa and get all through all of that process and kind of learn the culture and the language and then a lot of people kind of venture outward from there yeah i do feel like it's pretty transitional mm -hmm. we definitely have a lot of friends come and go yeah yeah we do <laughs> and I it's know, always sad. sad to see them leave <laughs> i know yeah but some of them are off on really cool adventures so. yeah and then that gives us new places to go visit so. yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah state we may be going to germany yeah who knows? <laughs> we have a friend who's going to germany so that gives us an excuse to go over there yes go down back to my roots <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just really want to spend more time in Ecuador. Yeah. <laughs> and all around Ecuador. Yes. All right. I think that's it for this video of the 12 reasons why expats leave Cuenca. Let us know if you can think of any other reasons or if you left for a different reason. Put that in the comments below so we can share that with other people. Yes, please. And on that note, we'll see you all in the next video. Ciao. Ciao. Here are the 12 reasons why expats leave Cuenca. Although this, these lists could be a... Bleh, 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 bleh. <laughs> 
Today we're going to share with you the 12 reasons why expats leave Cuenca. But before we get into that, please remember to hit that subscribe button if you're into anything. Oh, I, I was ready to ring. 